Alrighty, hello YouTube. I got another video for you guys today. Uh, this time we're going to be talking about guns in EVE Online and how to get the most out of them uh, so that you guys can be effective killers and uh, a little bit more effective in a fleet or a little bit more effective at missions or whatever it is that you're shooting in EVE Online. Let's make you more effective or as a refresher video, uh, bring you up to speed or understanding of guns because if you haven't played in a while they can be somewhat confusing uh, first off we're going to talk about uh, tracking an application and how it works so when you hover over your guns uh, you're given a handful of stats immediately uh, we get a falloff range an optimal range damage per second the damage types and the turret tracking uh, the ones that we really want to key in on are the tracking, optimal, and falloff. Uh, they give us uh, our relative statistics. And as I am a guy that doesn't like to do exact numbers and likes to do rough ideas of how things work, and with experimentation you'll get a feel for what's enough and what's not enough, uh, we'll say that this guy's our target, right? So this is a little porpoise. I don't know what he's doing. Maybe he'll comment on the video. Uh, but we hit the micro warp drive, right? And if we're flying directly at him, we're going to have a low transversal. So if we're flying directly towards the target, we have a low transversal. As we get closer here, you're going to see our little apex changes. And when we're flying past him, we have a really high transversal. And then as we go past him and go further away from him, our transversal goes down. And so now we have a low transversal again. So you guys kind of get how that works. When the target's close to you and moving quickly across your bow or across the front or the back of your ship or the side of your ship or whatever it is, you have a higher transversal. When they're further away and you're flying in a relatively similar direction to them, you have a lower transversal. And if I turn 90 degrees here and I fly directly across the front of him, now I have a high transversal with him again. So depending on the situation, depending on your ship, depending on what it is, sometimes you can track in all these situations, sometimes you can only track when the transversal is low, and sometimes you don't care when you're the smaller ship. But when you're the bigger ship, it's very important to keep that transversal in mind, as that will affect your damage application every single time. Uh, regardless of if you have the best stats in the world, if they have a really high transversal, it's pretty hard to hit the target. Uh, that's just basically how guns work. Two stationary targets not moving have zero transversal, thus you will do full damage. If you have high transversal, the damage is a little bit harder to put out. If you have lower transversal, it's a little bit easier to get out. That out of the way. That explains 99% of the time why, while they're in range, I should be hitting my target. Your transversal is high, bud. Get your transversal right, and you'll hit your target. So we just had to get that one out of the way. Uh, this number at the bottom, the turret tracking, uh, affects the uh, your chance of hitting. And then the other factor that uh, is mathed with that is your signature radius. So your tracking, signature radius, and speed all get mathed up together in some wibbly-wobbly crazy math, and it ends up whether or not you hit. That's how that works. Your signature radius which mine is through the roof right now because I have a micro warp drive on. Your signature radius, your speed, are calculated against their guns, their signature radius, and their speed are calculated against your guns, and it's relative velocity, not your velocity. So you can have two ships screaming at 2,500 or 25 kilometers a second and have zero tracking, and as long as they're both going in the same direction at the same speed, they will both be able to hit each other just fine. It's relative speed, not your actual speed. So that is something to keep in mind as well. It's not like missiles where their where actual speed is the case. It's specifically relative speed. So how fast they're going compared to you and in what direction they are going when compared to you. Okay. So I know that's like a five minute explaining tracking, but it's something that people have a hard time wrapping their head around sometimes. And I think that's the best way to explain it. The second factor of whether or not you hit your target is range. And this one's pretty easy to explain. Uh, at optimal range or below, uh, so all the way from 45 kilometers down to zero kilometers, I will be able to apply full damage. Some people believe that you have to be just right at optimal to get the best damage. That is not true. 
uh, but being closer to optimal rather than further from up or rather than right up in your face lends to the whole tracking idea. So your tracking is better when you're further away. It's easier to track targets that are moving at certain relative velocities. So further generally is better for application unless it's outside your optimal range. So optimal range and blow, you will do full damage. Uh, if you're shooting a stationary target and you are at zero, you will do full damage. Assuming that they're relatively stationary to you. Again, the tracking is an effect the other thing is fall off and uh this is misleading in a way and i'm going to explain that here uh the fall off range uh here says 76 kilometers uh, our actual fall off is about 30 uh and i take the 76 subtract 45 we end up with 31 so about 30 so our fall off range is 30 kilometers and uh we can show this by right clicking on our show info here and we can see that our optimal range is 44.1 and our fall off is 30.01 see i knew it before we opened up the window not because i looked already but because i know how the math works and how it shows it in certain windows but basically how it works is they take the optimal range and add the fall off and that's where you're doing about half dps uh, you do roughly 50% DPS at your fall off. And then if you add fall off again, that's where you do 25% DPS and you are doing almost no damage at that point. So if you take your, your optimal and you add fall off, uh, so in this case at 71 kilometers or 76 kilometers, I will be doing about 50% of my, my actual DPS. And then if I add another 31 per, or 30 kilometers to that, which is 105, I will end up doing 25% of my damage at that point. Uh, and it's roughly, it's it's never exact, but it's it's roughly, uh, I should have grabbed a graphic. Maybe I'll put one up in post editing, maybe I won't, but uh, there's a there's a curve. And the, the points that you need to take note of, uh, once you've seen the curve, it's, it's always the same. It's just stretched out or not stretched out. But once you've seen the curve, it makes sense. But it's, it's, it's the, the points you need to know are at your optimal, you do 100%. At your fall off, you do 50% per percent, and then at your optimal plus fall off plus fall off, you do 25% and then it drops off like a rock. Uh, so after that, that fall off plus fall off, you end up doing very little damage. That's how that statistic works. So we get into really weird scenarios and Mimitar guns are, or auto cannons are notorious for this where the optimal range is like two and the fall off is like 30 and then you can hit out to 60 because you hit 25% damage out to 60 kilometers. Or the exact opposite with lasers, the optimals and the fall-offs are, or it has really short fall-offs and really long optimals. So you have to be like right at the right range or right in the sweet point to actually do damage. So in order to actually hit a target that has, you know, your optimals at 50 and your fall-off is at 60, you're not gonna hit past 70. Like there's no way. Whereas the other is true, you have an optimal of like 10 and then a fall off of 70, you'll be able to hit out to like 140 without an issue. Uh, again, with the mitigated damage, but that's how those curves work. You you end up doing less damage the further away, but it's it's fall off plus fall off is what you need to know. Uh, that's the the important bit. Um, yeah, so that's that's just kind of how guns work, and and the basics of guns. Uh, next, I'm going to go ahead and talk about uh, modules that you can fit to improve your gun statistics uh, and get a little bit more out of your ship so that uh, when you're counting the beans, they actually do more damage. Whether or not this actually helps in reality depends on your piloting and a few other factors, but for the most part, you increase stats on ship, ship performs better in combat. So uh, we'll go in the mid slots first. Uh, in mid slots, we have two things that can help guns. If I open up the simulation here and take this off, uh, we have two different variations of tracking computers. One is a remote tracking computer. And the other is a regular tracking computer. They come in meta market or meta faction officer, both of them do. Uh, but the remote tracking computer uh, improves the optimal or fall off or both of a ally. So you can lock an ally and give them remote uh, boost. This is slightly stronger than having it on your ship locally, but requires coordination on a level that is 
difficult, so you're rewarded for putting in the extra effort. However, uh, generally people will fit one on their own. Tracking computers uh, give a base of eight, uh, 15 fall off, eight optimal range, and 15 tracking speed. So unscripted, they give you a little bit of everything. Uh, there are charges that you can put into these. You can put in an optimal range script, which will, uh, you guessed it, switch everything over to fall off and optimal and take all the, the bonus from tracking away. Uh, this increases your fall off to 30 and 15. This is for tech two, which is kind of the standard. Uh, faction being better, meta being lesser in some way, shape or form. And then tracking speed does the exact opposite where it flips off the uh, fall off and optimal and gives additional tracking speed. So with that description that I gave earlier, uh, you would be able to decide based on your circumstance, uh, which one will help you more in the situation that you are currently in. And hopefully uh, that helps you with selecting your scripts a little bit better. Uh, so there is that. Uh, so that's, that's, the, that's really all that you can add in mid slots. It's not a lot, but it does mean that if you have an open mid slot on your ship, that you are able to increase your, your damage application uh, depending on your fitting. Uh, next up, we get into the low slots. And in this case, I actually have both of the kinds of modules. Uh, so we have damage increasing mods. And for guns, I'm just gonna kind of pile them all into one category because they're the same across the board. But in the low slots, we have uh, turrets and launchers, weapon upgrades. In the low slots, we have. Uh, I'm showing mids. In the low slots, we have the uh, entropic radiation sinks, uh, gyro stabilizers, heat sinks, and, mag and magnetic field stabilizers. All of these increase your damage and your rate of fire by a flat rate. Uh, and then remember, stacking penalties exist. Uh, so if we show info on the gy gy Tech 2 gyro stabilizer, uh, they're standardized across the board. So all the, 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 the gyro stabilizers, the the heat sinks and the mag stabs, they all increase by the same percentages. So it's kind of balanced across the board in that way. Uh, but we get a damage modifier of 1.1 and a rate of fire bonus of 10.6. This 1.1 means 10%. Um, that because it increases it by 110 or it, it adds 10% modifier. So you take the, the amount of damage you do and you multiply it by 1.1, that's 10%. Uh, and then the rate of fire is 10.5. And then if you get into like the faction stuff, they get a little bit better and then officers get even better. So I'll just show off, a, I guess, a core max here just to be fancy. But a core max would be 14.5% additional damage and 11% rate of fire. Uh, so they, they, they change based on the, the grade that you get, but uh, that's how you math that and figure out what that means uh, and how good the module actually is. Without simulating, you can kind of get an idea before you put it on a ship or put it in a simulation tab. Uh, so you can increase your damage uh, in that route, or you can increase your damage via application by putting on tracking enhancers. And tracking enhancers, a lot like tracking computers, uh, they're basically tracking computers that you cannot script. Uh, so they give tracking speed and optimal and fall off bonuses as well. Uh, and you cannot script these. They're not active modules like the tracking computer, uh, but they do give the, a very similar bonus to tracking computers. So it's like putting an additional tracking computer that you can't script, but they don't use cap. And so that's what you can do to increase your damage and application in the low slots. The next one that I have for you guys is rig slots and improvements that you can do on rig slots. So I did verify this and uh, everything is standardized in the name of culture. Uh, so if you look at the names of things, it will be the same across the board. So you don't need to know specifically what kind of weapon uh, you're, you're using. You just need to know what the names are to increase your damage application and you just have to match the like things with like things if you're using hybrid weapons you use hybrid rigs if you're using uh projectile weapons you use projectile rigs and so on and so forth uh this should be kind of self-exemplary this is guns in general not specific guns uh, but rigs are unified across the board so what i can do is i can go ahead and hit this rigs tab and look at uh, energy weapon rigs uh, as an example i'm just going to pick large and i'm going to go down the list because i have a uh, cheat sheet up here uh, just next to the camera which is helping me look at you guys a little bit I'm trying to make my videos a little bit more appealing and uh, looking directly at the camera was a tip that I got so I'm trying to put my script next to the camera uh, so in rigs we have a 15 20 percent increase for tracking application rigs uh, so tech 1 being 15 percent and tech 2 being 20 percent the ambit extension prefix increases your fall off uh, which is really good for projectiles 
because projectiles have high falloffs and low optimals. And we have the locus coordinator increases your uh, your optimal. Uh, locus coordinator increases optimal, which is really good for, you guessed it, lasers with their high optimals and low falloffs. And then the metastasis adjuster increases your tracking speed. The tech one variant of all three of these increases it by 15%, and the tech two per, uh, tech two variant increases it by 20%. And I believe that the uh, uh, the trade-off for this is power grid on all of these. So it takes it trades power grid for these additional stats. So it does cost you power grid to put these mods on uh, by increasing the power grid requirement of the guns. Uh, the two damage increasing rigs uh, that you can get are the burst aerators and the collision accelerators. And they do what they sound like. The burst aerators increase your rate of fire and the collision accelerators increase your damage per shot. In general, a rule of thumb is that increasing your rate of fire increases your DPS more than increasing your damage. However, increasing your rate of fire will also improve, increase your cap usage and ammo usage. So do keep that in mind when building fits and also alpha slash raw DPS. Sometimes one is better than the other and it is a very situational thing. So that is something you want to keep in mind. Uh, Fun, notable rigs that do exist that are unfrequently used. Uh, the Discharge UEH, UEH, Elutriation prefix is reduced cap usage. So this applies to, I believe, uh, Triglavian. No, Trig weapons don't have rigs. So this applies to lasers and hybrids. Can get the Discharge Elutriation, which will reduce the cap usage for your weapons, which is helpful for things like the Paladin, where they siege and they have a two second rate of fire and consume like 30 gigajoules a second, and it's it's ridiculous. So it can be useful in situations like that. The other bonus rig is the administration unit, which trades power grid requirement for CPU requirement. So it takes, uh, it reduces the CPU need. But again, all weapon rigs do increase power grid need. You can, however, go in and uh, do your your skills and increase your, your rigging skills to do that. By the way, I should go through skills. I forgot to do that. I have one more module to look at. Uh, and this modules or this set of modules only applies to Marauders and Dreadnoughts. Uh, there are differences between the two. And if you have trained for them, you should be using them. I cannot think of a reason why you would use a Marauder or a Dreadnought without having their Siege module equipped. Although I'm sure there's a situation somewhere and somebody would be, actually, there's that one use. I would be like, yep, you're probably right. Uh, but we have in weapon upgrades, in the high slots, we have weapon upgrades, uh, Siege modules. Uh, the Marauder gets to use the Bastion module, uh, which doubles the rate of fire and increases tank when active and also increases fall off uh, range as well, which is really helpful. Having an additional fall off, I don't remember if it increases optimal too. It might, I know it gives a solid range bonus. So we got fall off and optimal range of 25%. So it increases the range by a flat 25. Uh, and then the, uh, the actual module labeled siege module is for dreadnoughts. So you have a tech one siege module and a tech two siege module for dreadnoughts. Uh, I'm going to assume that if you're flying a Dreadnought, you're probably not watching this video to learn about Siege Modules. Maybe I'll do another video specifically on Siege Modules, because there's a lot of them and they're all really cool and they're fun to use, but... Um, Bastion is amazing on Dread or on Marauders, and the Siege Module is amazing on Dreadnoughts. Who'd have thunk, right? They can Siege, it's a thing. Anyways... Um, I did not take notes on this, so I'm going to rough it through this part. I forgot to take notes on this. Um, we have skills which increase your damage and application as well, and I'm going to go through those really quick. Uh, there are six of them. If I open up my skill tab and I go into gunnery, uh, there are support skills, and I don't know how to, uh, I don't know how to filter them out, so I'm going to try and catch them as I scroll down. Uh, so we have motion prediction, uh, which increases your tracking speed. We have Sharpshooter, which increases your optimal range. Rapid Firing increases your rate of fire. 
we just sunk a skill called rapid firing, increases rate of fire. Uh, we have controlled bursts, which reduces cap usage. Uh, very useful for weapons that use cap. Looking at lasers over there. Uh, the gunnery skill itself increases turret damage, which is really helpful. And then we've got sharpshooter. There is... Uh, I'm trying to scroll through so I, slowly so I don't miss them. Uh, we have Surgical Strike, which is a raw damage increase of 3% per skill level, meaning 15%. Uh, trajectory Analysis increases your fall off. And then, did I talk about the tracking increase? So basically, there's a skill for every stat. There's a skill for optimal range, there's a skill for tracking, there's, skill, there's a couple skills for damage, and there's a skill for capacitor, there's a skill for uh, tracking optimal fall off. And there's a skill for uh, raw damage and rate of fire. I think I said that like three times. But those are your gunnery support skills. Regardless of which guns you train, you're going to need those support skills. Unless you're training uh, projectile weapons, you don't need to train control bursts. But do train your support skills up to fours as quickly as possible if you're going to be using guns. They're super helpful. And I believe that is all that you need to know in order to effectively use your guns in EVE Online. If I'm missing something, please do add what I'm missing in the comments below. And if it is a useful or helpful tip, I may pin it or I may respond in the comments below. If you like this video, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe down below to encourage me to make more videos for you guys, as I do enjoy doing this. And I uh, like reading your guys' comments. They are actually fantastic. But happy hunting, guys. Enjoy your time in EVE Online and continue bringing each other up. And I will see you guys in the next one.